takes that, away we go, superb start from the middle of that front row by Jack Miller, but it's the dream launch again from the pole man, Paco Bagnaia, and Basci Nini trying to go around the outside of Miller into the first corner, no way through, Alexis Spar go around the outside of the beast maybe, into turn two, no, but Bagnaia already, 8-9 right legs clear through the first sector. Absolutely magic start by Mark Marquez on the first lap, right, as he managed to steer clear Binder's of all of the mayhem. Off. Sorry Lewis, Binder's getting picked off again, he lost second place Miller on the last lap, and now he's lost third place in that first corner on the brakes on lap number four. Michael must have had a shocking start because he was no way near on the grid. That's Piro's yeah. Ducati down there as well in the Grand Champ. So there's three riders out already. Fabio Quattararo did not get a particularly good start. I was watching him at the start, but he went around the outside into turn one. He was behind Alicia Spargro when they hit the brakes. And Alicia Spargro has gained places up into sixth. And here comes Bagnaia attacking on the brakes then on the inside of the corner, <laughs> turn number eight. They lean on each other. The two future Faction Academy teammates going now towards turn number nine. It's Miller who made the dream launch on that first pole in four years. Bagnaia trying to run that tight inside line to Tomonto on that quick, aggressive change direction through one and two. And Jack Miller's hopes of a first win in 2022 from a first pole in this is turning into a Ducati disaster here on home soil because two of their men who started on the front row of the grid. Well, I think that might have been started by Alicia Spargo, he also got wide there into Tremonto, so clearly a little bit slippery into there. Alicia Spargo didn't go down, but Benzeki, with the two dropouts ahead of him, he's up into the top six now. The yellow flags are out again, though. Both Miller and Free join his cross. Two more down. Did you have Antonio and Morgan getting it? Bagnaia is going to on the inside here as well. He takes the lead in his home Grand Prix on the inside into Guercia Corner. Bagnaia then in position. He got in hot, but he somehow pulled it up towards the apex. Brilliant that by Mario Pignal as the Aprilia man. It's already been a race for Trish, doesn't it, so far, with Miller starting on the front row going down. Bagnaia then leads, and now with clear track in front of him, can he start stretching away one of his big, big rivals? And Miller, they're still inside that top three off the front row. Early bath for Mia. A real threat around this circuit as well, so Mia out of contention, but the threat for Fabio Quattararo is coming from his former teammate. A gap already emerging up ahead of him to the Ducatis, and Maverick Vinales is looking to take away fifth position into turn nine, and he does. Yeah, it's moved it on this former factory of our team. Fabio Quattro had to really check up there, didn't he? He almost ploughed into the back of Vinales' factory. Of That's going to cost... The two Premier Ducatis, both Jorge Martin and Joan Zarco, starting to slip backwards. Here's Mar Marquez then on the 93. But we've oh, got Ducati down. down! It's Jack Miller! Oh, dearie me, we were just waxing lyrical about the perfect start, the dream first lap for Jack Miller. It's all gone horribly wrong so, so quickly thereafter. Rio corner, which has caught out so many riders. Jack Miller's hopes of a first win in 2022. Third, this was the clash for Jack Miller then. On lap two, we need to turn number four. So a fresh tyre, full fuel tank still, and Miller goes down back at the front. Bagnaia in position A to try and secure that fourth consecutive victory in 2022. He leads from on down this Grand Prix. It's already been a race for Trish, doesn't it, so far, with Miller starting on the front row going down. Back at the front to two, down to just over a quarter of a second. It's nothing Here comes Vinales. Unbelievable corner speed through the farm curve, and in three successive laps, his main moves in the village corner. <laughs> he runs in hot. He briefly took the lead here at the British 19, a half back to the 1979 legendary race between Barry Sheen and Kenny Roberts. It's game one here between Bagnai and Vinales into Brooklyn for the penultimate time. Nothing between the top two men in this Grand Prix. Vinales then briefly led in this lap number 19, but it looks like it'll be Pekka Bagnai will have a narrow advantage. Bagnaia in position A to try and secure that fourth consecutive victory in 2022. He leads from Vinales of compatriot Quattararo as they sweep through Vale for the first time. It's like he's trying to line up and move back on the inside he into the move. loop. He did that perfectly. He set the ball up going through far and then through village. Perfectly executed move. He has now regained fifth place. Mind you, it's at the loop, turn 14, with a bit of a buffer there, man, back to the factory, the Catties of Mira Bagnaia. Will he take the first opportunity and sweep in on this lap number two? He starts to close up on John Zarco as they snake their way through the Magnus and Beckett's complex. Now they'll attack hard through Chapel Curve. You've got to make sure you get a good drive here. You don't want to lose momentum down that hangar straight. Quattararo then now is nearly half a second clear. I just wonder, Lewis, whether he'll, he'll come in right now. Quattararo then, you'd imagine, looking at the group at the moment, he's probably going to come out somewhere near Vinales, who currently holds sixth. He's got to come in now then, he has to come in now, otherwise he knows that. He's been given the message crystal clear on his pit board. He closes up on Zarko in the brakes. He sweeps to the right. He hugs the right inside the circuit. That's a fine on this lap, though. What kind of race pace Fabio Quattararo has underneath him? It's the first lap, really, where he's got any kind of 
clear track ahead of him. He's got an eight-tenth of a second gap to make up as Maverick Vinales now shows a front wheel behind Pekka Vanyaya. But Quattararo now has a bit of clear track oh. to try and close the gap to this leading quartet. He's eight-tenths behind at the moment. Vinales has got a fraction too hot there, maybe just picking up some uh, dirty air behind Vanyaya's factory Ducati, just in a little bit hot there going into turn number eight. Now the fastest little rider of this leading group. Mark Marquez watches on how much he would love to be in and amongst this battle. The eight times world champion will be testing here on Tuesday and Wednesday. Of course, his return to competitive action will hopefully be not too long after that. But for now, he has to watch and what an absorbing 10 Grand Prix he's watching. And still, any one of six or seven riders could still win this. The set hits the fastest lap of the Grand Prix as well at 133.095, keeping himself in 12th place. He's a long way behind Brad Binder in 11. Raul Fernandez, Darren Binder and Stefan Bradl are completing important scoring finishes. Jack Miller's just went 133, 7, 3, 7. He's in 18th place, having remounted, crashed out of the lead early on in the second lap uh, into turn number four. Ben Seki's down in 20th place, the Gian Antonio 21st. Those three, of course, were all very early fallers. Change just ahead, up ahead there between Bagnaia and Vignales. Bagnaia's back up ahead, one ball, still Bagnaia, who leads this Grand Prix now at the moment, but we were seeing just how good through that fast sequence of right hand as he really closed in on the back of the air. There's no way through into turn 12, it really does tighten on you. If you try and sniff a gap, it just closes in front of your eye. Hold on to fourth place at the moment, but Maverick Vinales sitting in second place certainly would appear at the moment if he's got more pace than by now up ahead of him. And just to underline the Aprilias, Alicia Spargro sets the fastest lap once again a 132.449. Oliveira and Binder then, they are starting to really get into their speed, aren't they? Oliveira was really fast about that, so 132.744. Starting to really hot up here at the front as well, because Pekka Bagnaia and Maverick Vinales, they exchanged fastest laps of the Grand Prix. Listen to this, folks. There were two thousandths of a second difference between Bagnaia and Vinales on that last lap. It was advantage Vinales by the narrowest of margins. It's so, so close between the top two men. Vinales now the fastest man on circuit by just two thousands of a second 12 laps to go here a 203 84 5 on that lap 12 is a pb lap from the italian as mark marquez starts to hunt down the world champions fabio quattararo the game folks who is starting to really get the hammer down he's coming marquez fastest man on the circuit at 203 553 that was six tenths quicker the real big nudge on zarco wasn't into seven zarco sent out to the marbles and that allows mark marquez through then mark marquez Marquez picks up another place. He's up now into eight spots. And he'll soon be having a look. Quattararo ahead of him. Quattararo's not going to know which way to look in the moment. He's still shaping up for a move on John Zarco. Quattararo visibly faster, just looks to have more grip, just carrying the superior corner speed than the Frenchman up ahead of him, Jean Zarco. But Quattararo, big problem for him as we've seen, to fourth position. Yeah, and Jean Zarco going the wrong way right now, although he's coming under immediate attack. Can he somehow fend off two factory Ducatis in the breaking zone for turn 12? He can. That's supreme confidence in the front end. Brilliant aggression from it through on Fabio Quattararo. The 93 attack continues unrelenting. The Vinales trying to pick up a bit of slips on that factory of Prilia. He won't be close enough to attack Bagnaia on the brakes in the Quadra corner. Not only was Bagnaia 2,000 to a second quicker than Marcelo than Vinales. Take advantage of that and a first MotoGP podium now becomes a real prospect from Keen to take it back immediately. Squared him off there, didn't he? Oh, how crucial though could that be with the time lost state? A rare mistake by him going in to Tremonto. You just felt that that came from the fact that he could see Bagnaia and Vinales by a whisker were just that little bit quicker than him on that previous lap and he could just sense maybe that they were starting to go for it trying to up the pace here and break away and he just made that mistake it didn't cost him too much because he recovered the brakes immediately accelerating out of Tremonto on Marine let's just check the lap times so how much did that cost in that lap again brilliant by Bagnaia Mignola it cost him half a second because Bagnaia Mignola is at 132 three for Pecco, a 132-2 for Marek Vinales, another best lap from him. He did indeed lose half a second with that key mistake at Tremonto. Quattararo can't match this pace at the moment as Bagnaia takes a bit of a tighter line into Rio. It just brings Vinales ever so closer. Vinales has often shown his left, the right as we look, but no way through on the inside. Bagnaia, as always, so, so good on the brakes. But as mentioned, this pace is proving too hot for Fabio Quattararo, who's losing ground now in fifth.
quite a corner again, Mignola just in a little bit hot. Starting to fade ever so slightly, although he is still holding a very comfortable fourth place at the moment. Fabio Quattararo had a poor lap last time around. He was back in the mid 133s. He actually lost a second, but truly gone now for the world champion. Yeah, this mistake here from Mignola into the Quetta corner cost him two tenths. He came through that first split just over to down on Bagnaia. He came through the second sector nearly four tenths down. And that's just given a bit of breathing space for Pekka Bagnaia. You can see he was thinking about a move on the inside of Vignal as the door was slammed shut in touch here. As you can see, it might be a lonely fourth place for him. He just hasn't got the late race pace of the three men directly ahead of him. It's a bit of a lonely sixth place for him as it stands right now. He does it, he's finally made it through. Now then, Vignales having dispensed the Quattro, that's been no easy task. Podium hunt back on for Maverick. The lead group, well, the top five men were covered by just a second at the end of that 11. Quattro just losing touch at the moment with Vignales. He was three tenths slower than the Aprilia man on that last lap, and he's nearly seven tenths now uh, behind the man who started second. I think that was more Vignales going forwards than Quattro going backwards. Fabio Quattro pretty much matched the pace of the leading four, but Vignales, who's the only rider in the top nine, to gaining in pace. He's lapping in the 59s at the moment. That's a move on Miguel Oliveira. The last time around, he was faster than everyone ahead of him. Yeah, is at managing those tyres and the key break stages, which helps you in the braking zone. That happened to Miguel Oliveira, collisions just after the start of the Grand Prix in Assen, fourth place. Former Moto2 world champion, looking like he's putting together another really strong leg showing here. He's now going to get close to Fabio Quattararo on the brakes going into Stowe Corner. Quattararo, he must be having some kind of issue with it. The move he had to make, he had to make that move at this juncture of the race because he was running out of time to hunt down what now has the top gun got in terms of the charge towards the top spot here. On his ball. It's difficult to know where to look. No, he just needs to try and look at what's ahead of him, but also what's coming from behind. Despite his asymmetrical Ducati with some winglets missing on the front of it, he managed to get past Fabio Quattararo out of the top six. Lovely by uh, Vinales, threading that apparently through the Ivan Needle on the inside. So Maverick Vinales on course for another top result here in Assen, not the podium. Oh, Ken, Fabio Quattararo has gone down again. Well, high drama again, Fabio Quattararo. Well, we thought it was unusual to see him crash once in a Grand Prix. But can you believe this now? He's crashed twice in 2022. He's really in pain as well. That was a big one. Was that a high side coming out yeah. of the Shruben? It is. It's a second crash in turn five for Fabio Quattararo. Don't think I've seen anything like this for quite some time. Then the reigning world champion. And then he just gets flicked once, twice, three times. The bars he goes. Can you believe it then? The World Championship almost turned on his head really here. Fabio Quattraro on the way in, hitting a late spider a few laps to go. And on the way out of turn five, Oi. that's a big one. That's horrible. That's a savage one. A fucking Bronco that factory Yamaha turned into. We're looking now directly at Fabio Quattraro. Robert Sarko peels into Cops corner. He leads. See now the Aprilia side by side. Vinales. A shocking start by Maverick Vinales. He's been really caught napping as the lights went out. We've seen him struggle a few times in the past on new tyres with a Marco. He's got the hammer down immediately here, hasn't he? Already in the first, definitely four tenths of a second clear as they sweep through Vale for the first time. He wanted, but fourth place would be easily his best result on the RSGP. He's 1.6 seconds now behind Jorge. On the inside of Vinales Beautiful into the move. loop. He did that perfectly. He set the ball up going through farm and then through village. Perfectly executed. He has now regained fifth place. There is the notification. Will he take the first opportunity and sweep in? He starts to close up on Joan Zarco as they snake their way through the Magnus and Beckett's complex. Now they'll attack hard through Chapel Curve. You've got to make sure you get good drive here. You don't want to lose momentum down that hangar straight. But then now is nearly half a second clear. It's wonder Lewis whether he'll, he'll come in right now. You'd imagine, looking at the group at the moment, he's probably going to come out somewhere near Vinales, who currently holds sixth. He's got to come in now then. He has to come in now. Otherwise, he's been given the message crystal clear clear on his pit board, he closes up on Zarko in the brakes, he sweeps to the right, he hugs the right hand side of the circuit, Luke then at the loop, made it lose him anything between eight tenths <laughs> and one second, he drops right back in front of Maverick Vinales, he really didn't lose anything, but he went from second then to down fifth. to fifth, 593, it was his quickest lap of this Grand Prix so far, so let's just check his lap time, having done the long lap, 
on that lap number four. Holding positions and in the groove. Things that we haven't seen really since pre-Barcelona when he had that fractured wrist in the controversial first corner collision instigated by attacking Nakagami. Since the five-week summer break came just at the perfect time for him. He was able to get fully fit, recover on that wrist. He's not going to be close enough to attack him in 24th place. Tough one to take for Zarco. Tell you what, it's not all lost yet though for Primo Pramac Racing because the fastest rider on track once again last time round. And now attacks, looking to try and make it a Ducati one too, but relating enough on the brakes to hold that at bay. There was only one rider who was under the two minute barrier last time round. There's now a gain on the front end of the braking stability. Straight up and down and capitalising to devastating effect throughout Veilon. Back at the front then, there's the Spanish rider, of course. The collapse of the team means he's off to pastures new next year at the LCR Honda squad. What a boost this after all of his recent injury problems. He's easy to forget, isn't it, after the Port of Our Grand Prix. Early on this season, he was sharing the World Championship lead. 12 kilometres to find a way of closing and then pass Pekka Bagnaia to take a second British Grand Prix victory. You can see how hard Miller's pushing. And Factory Ducati, big wheel sprinters, he got on the gas coming through Luffield. The gap over the line. Oh, oh, Zarko, Zarko has crashed out of the lead. Joan Zarco has fluffed his lines. Trail breaking on the front end of that Prima Ducati. Oh. Zarco who made that late decision to move up from the soft front tyre to the medium front tyre. Well, the long wait will go on. There's going to be no fairy tale victory and no fairy tale first victory for the Frenchman here. This is out of the lead on lap number five into turn eight. This is the moment where a potential first motor GP victory slips through Zarco's fingers. You can see he was almost a full lead angle. He was a long fight to the end of the team manager. Three ways told Simon Clay, but I told him not to think about the World Championship. Today is your day. Go for broke. He looked so, so strong, particularly in FP4 yesterday. But again, Joe. And Zarco sees another golden opportunity to end his victory duck in the Premier Class, slip through his fingers. He has remounted, he's in dead last, back at the pack, just over six tenths of a second. Key lap now from Eric Vinales to try and bring himself within closing distance of Bagnaia on the final lap of the Grand Prix. This is that 19 of 20, and even with the overtake, on can see it, he can smell it, he can almost taste it, this first victory for the factory of pretty team. He said yesterday the dream will come true. One day in the future he will be a race winner again in Motor GP for the Noali factory. Will that dream come true? In about five minutes time or so, Vinales drops that right leg out as he pushes that bit of pretty on the brakes. Here fading fast. He's obviously encountered some late grip problems. Comes up in a fifth place. I think he's going to run out of time in terms of the victory. A podium out of the question. It's fantastic battle with Miguel Oliveira. Oh. oh, that was super, super close. Going through turns number eight and nine and sees another point slip through his fingers. Late, late drama potentially back in some because Mavri Vinales is starting to charge towards the gap through sector two down to just over a quarter of a second. He'll worryingly ominous for the rest of this leading trio. Vinales unable to fight back. No one else has. He's got seven tenths of a second up ahead of him to Peko Banyaya. A lot will be told in this next lap or so to see if he'll straight across that gap and give us perhaps a rerun of what we saw at Le Mans earlier this year. Yeah, now just has to make sure that he doesn't get quickly passed by uh, Vinales because Banyaya is going for it here. He is starting to open up the biggest lead we've seen in this Grand Prix. You felt like knew he had to make that move. Vinales had sat behind Pekka Banyaya for so much of this Grand Prix without being able to find a way through to the baton. What can he do in response? There's a quick dashboard message going the way of Pekka Banyaya. The gap, eight laps remaining, 0.3. In reality, it's actually much more than that. He was nearly seven tenths quicker. And at the moment, Miguel Oliveira reeling off yet another fastest lap. This is unbelievable play on the outside. As Simon said, that's not where you want to be. Those guys are not going there intentionally. It's just where they're finding themselves with the, the spray and the visibility. That was huge. Pekka Bangai in particular needs to go and buy a lottery ticket tonight because that was so, so close to disaster for the pair of them. They're still circulating, but he's doing a better job right now than Oliveira. He's now on this lap alone in three sectors, taken seven tenths, stretching away here. 2.2 seconds the gap as Oliveira comes to the final sector. Check the gap between this man, your race leader, Miguel Oliveira. The perfect Grand Prix so far for Miguel Oliveira. He has not put a foot wrong. Well, the last lap, Oliveira is your race leader. His advantage over the line was cut down to 2.8 seconds. Gonna have to rush this, Maverick Miyazi. Perhaps went for that move a little earlier than he had to into Village on the penultimate lap. He's got so much more pace. He's a little wide, though, into Cops. That's costing vital ground. That could just be the respite that Bagnaia needs. But Miyazi needs to get back into his rhythm quickly. Less than a lap to go. How decisive could that little error, a small, tiny error, could prove to be so decisive. He was just one inches wide off his normal line there. 
Vinales going into Cox Corner. It's given Pekka Banyar that little bit of breathing space through sector one, then it's four tenths is the advantage that Banyar has over Maverick Vinales. The top two men in the World Championship now, not really serious. Oh, right again, Vinales. He's just getting a little bit impatient here. He's been so, so silky smooth in this Grand Prix so far, but just when he needed that composure, he's just getting a right little again. bit scrappy, a little bit erratic. That's the third time now on this last lap that Maverick Vinales has just pushed that front tire a little bit too hard, and he's letting this win slip through his grasp here. Spagnaia comes into Abbey Corner, his lead over half a second. Vinales was so, so good though through Village and Farm last time around. That's where he closed in on Spagnaia. Vinales trying to pick up a bit of slips on that factory for it. He won't be close enough to a challenge in the quieter corner. He's nowhere near close enough this time around. Spagnaia does have those crucial few tents in his pocket over Maverick Vinales. There is still a hope for Vinales if he can close in through the loop here. Here now. comes Vinales. Unbelievable corner speed through the farm curve, and in three successive laps, his main moves. <laughs> he runs in hot. He briefly took the lead here at the Grand Prix, but it's been an absolute classic. Bangaya, the best in 2022. He takes a famous win here, World Championship. He takes it by four tenths of a second. Maverick Vinales, there is back to back podiums this year for a prettiest. To the runner up, who was receiving well deserved applause from his team members. This is an excellent result that will give him some optimism for upcoming races.